Hi there and welcome back. We're here today to talk about dinosaur fossils and how you identify them. If you want to know how licking can help with that, then please check out the link in the description to find out more. I'm here with Susie Maidman, who's one of our dinosaur researchers at the museum. It's lovely to be here today. Welcome to the sub -basement. Thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, we've got all these really interesting fossils in front of us. I mean, how do you even know where to start looking for them? Well, in terms of fossils, fossils are, of course, the remains of life, any yeah. life that's ever lived. So we need to look in environments where things live. So that could be um, in the sea, uh, on land, um, but we have to look at, at rocks that were deposited in those environments. We can't look at things like volcanic rocks because there are no fossils in those, fairly obviously. Now, if we're talking specifically about dinosaurs, yeah. then we've, we can narrow that down a bit because we know that dinosaurs only lived on land yeah. and they lived in the Mesozoic period for about 170 million years. So we've got to be able to know how old our rocks are and that they were deposited on land. Um, and almost certainly, if they're the right age and the right environment, then we're going to find dinosaurs in them. Yeah. And, you know, if you're walking along the coast somewhere and you're looking at the rocks, how do you know what is a rock and how do you find the dinosaur fossils that might be in it? Well, I mean, firstly, the first thing you can probably see here is that colour isn't going to help us. Yeah. Um, so we have some, some brown, kind of light brown coloured fossils here. We've got some greys. We've got some very dark coloured fossils. So colour doesn't help, but you can see that some of these shapes are quite unusual and unique. Yeah. So this is actually a, a horn core from a triceratops. Oh, wow. um, but you can see it's, it's kind of rounded in cross section. It's got these, these grooves along its surface. Um, and so it doesn't, it doesn't look like a rock. It doesn't look like a stone that you yeah. might find on the beach at all, does it? Um, so there's that. Another thing that we can do is this is a little fragment of bone that is the kind of thing that you might find on a beach. Um, and can you see how it's got this texture inside it that's very porous? It's got these little like, holes. Like a honeycomb. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now that is a uh, characteristic of the inside of the bone. Yeah. Um, and this can really help us distinguish that something's bone rather than rock. And if we have a tiny little bit, that's usually what I look for. Okay. Um, another thing that we can do is, is we can look for minerals. So you can see this is a big toe bone for something like an iguanodon. Oh. Um, and can you see these sparkly minerals on the surface? Yes. So yeah. this is pyrite, fool's gold. Um, and it, it forms on the surface of these of these bones. So it's quite different from the pebbles that you find on the beach. Yeah, and it's not just kind of minerals like pyrite that make up it. You can also get kind of, I think, precious gems like opal can make up a fossil. Yeah, that's right. There's some dinosaurs in Australia that are preserved totally uh, in opal. So they're, they're really beautiful and fabulous fossils. And then, of course, probably quite high value as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, when you're kind of looking at these different fossils, what is it that tells you about what different species or types of dinosaur it might be? Well, ideally, we need to have a little bit more than a single bone or a single bit of bone to be able to identify um, what we're looking at. But, you know, if we, if we do find a bit of bone, like this one here, I said it's a, a horn core of a triceratops. Yeah. We know that because we can compare it to more complete specimens and, and we can recognise it. So really, we want to take our bit of bone to a museum and compare it to other specimens. But there are some clues as well. Um, that you can look for. So this great big lump of bone here um, is actually the neck vertebra from a sauropod, a long neck, long tailed dinosaur. Um, and can you see that it's got all these kind of pockets and, and, and things there? Well, these are actually um, uh, areas of the bone that were invaded by air sacs. Okay. And the air sacs are like extensions from the lungs and birds have this today uh, and sauropods had that in the past. And so these are uh, features that if we see a vertebra with all of these kind of pockets in, we know it must be from a sauropod. So there's a few features we can use. Okay, and then, you know, kind of, what happens if you can't identify it to a specific type of dinosaur? I mean, is that still something that's scientifically useful? Yeah, it can be, and it depends on the question that you're trying to answer with your research. Okay. So if we found a tiny bit of bone, like, you know, something like this, yeah. which is very beach rolled, um, it's from the Isle of Wight, it's probably been rolled around in the waves. If we found that in a place where we had never found any dinosaur fossils ever before, then that could be really, really useful and significant and tell us that they were living there, help us interpret the environment of the rocks, um, maybe even, you know, tell us something about age if we didn't already know that information. Yeah. But, you know, on the Isle of Wight, we kind of, we have a lot of fossils from there. This is less useful. We don't know where it's come from exactly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's more difficult for, for this to be scientifically important. And to be honest, today, we probably wouldn't put that in our collection if somebody donated it. 
I mean, is it something where with these less important specimens you can take samples and maybe use that for some kind of experiment you wouldn't want to put your important specimens through? Yeah, that's absolutely something we can do. And, and one of the things that people very frequently do is they want to cut up the bone to look at the internal texture, because this can tell us how fast the animal was growing when it died and whether it was an adult or not. Oh. Um, and of course, who knows what people might want to do in the future? Yeah. They might invent some new technique that um, needs little tiny fragments of bone uh, and, and they can answer loads of questions. So, so we always keep them just in case. I mean, to be honest, we could keep talking about this for hours and hours, but unfortunately, I think that's all we've got time for. So it's been lovely talking to you, Susie, and thank you very much for sparing the time. Well, thanks for coming down. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. Let us know what you thought about it down in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum.